Sean Travis Kemp. I talked about this before in my Gary Payton video, but sometimes you'll get an NBA legend whose legacy and impact get somewhat lost in the game's history for one reason or another. In the cases of Kemp and Payton, it's due to the fact that they spent the majority of their Hall of Fame career for a city that literally no longer has an NBA team. Who is there to hang their jerseys, or to give them standing ovations and reminisce about years past? Unfortunately, no one. So their connection to today's NBA fan has become even more hazy. But with this video, hopefully we can remind the basketball community about the impact, uniqueness, and the talent of the great Sean Kemp. Sean was drafted with the 17th overall pick in the 1989 NBA draft by the Seattle Supersonics. The athletic 6'10 power forward didn't have very high expectations upon entering the league since he was only 19 years old and was the NBA's youngest player at the time. He started in just one game of his rookie season and had very modest contributions of 6.5 points and 4.3 rebounds on 48% shooting. The team finished with only a 500 record and missed the playoffs, but it would be in a second season where he would really begin to break out, and a big reason for that was the arrival of their new rookie point guard, Gary Payton. Kemp and Payton had playstyles that were basically tailor-made for one another, as Gary was a quick point guard who consistently wanted to push the tempo for the Sonics, and Kemp, being a young and athletic slasher, was more than happy to oblige. The nickname Lob City came from the LA Clippers of the early 2010s, but if there is a team who deserved that nickname before them, it was certainly the Supersonics of the 1990s, as the Payton and Kemp connection was one of the most frequent and entertaining highlights during that era. With his new facilitator helping him develop, Kemp had very improved sophomore numbers of 15 points, 8.4 rebounds, and 1.5 blocks on 50.8% shooting in just 30 minutes per game. Over the next several years, his game would continue to develop as he slowly improved his footwork and post moves to make him an even better scorer and rebounder. But obviously, what continued to make him stand out was his incredible play above the rim. I recently saw someone say in a comment that Kemp put the power and power forward. And honestly, I couldn't put it any better myself. Everything this guy did on the court looked violent, disrespectful, and authoritative in a good way. From the way he dribbled the basketball, to the way he attacked the basket, how he blocked shots, how he dunked the ball, how he embarrassed his opponents, and even straight up taunted them at times. In many ways, he became the symbol of what made Seattle Supersonics basketball special, as his game was loud, energetic, and exciting, just like their audience was in those days. Many young basketball fans today often talk about how they think modern day players are bigger, stronger, and more athletic than athletes of years past. But apparently, they forgot about the 6'10 Sean Kemp. From 1993 to 1997, Kemp was selected as an all-star in all five of those years with the Sonics. And in that time, he averaged 18.6 points, 10.7 rebounds, 1.5 steals, and 1.6 blocks on 53% shooting. They made it to the playoffs in each of those seasons and came close to making it to the finals in 1993. But the Sonics wouldn't break through until the 95-96 season where they won 64 games and were meeting the 72-10 Chicago Bulls in the championship series. I won't go into a ton of details about this series because most of you already know the details. Bulls win the first three games, Sonics charge back and win two, and then the Bulls and Jordan win the iconic Game 6 on Father's Day. But what many people do forget is how special Kemp was in this series, as he averaged 23.3 points, 10 rebounds, 1.3 steals, and 2 blocks on 55% shooting. Pulling off these numbers in this hard-fought, low-scoring series was impressive enough for him to finish as a very close second place in the finals MVP voting. If he had won the award over Jordan, that would have made him only the second player in NBA history to win the finals MVP on the losing team. This was essentially the peak of Kemp's career, because after contract disputes with the Sonics organization and another failed attempt at a deep postseason run, the Sonics traded Kemp to the Cavaliers in the summer of 1997. It was at this time that narratives started to pop up about Kemp's work ethic, because he was noticeably gaining lots of weight with the Cavaliers. Although his three seasons with Cleveland were certainly statistically productive, his game had clearly changed as most of his explosiveness and athleticism from his Seattle days were now gone. After his issues with drugs and drinking became apparent, he wasn't very impactful and was only in the league for a few more years, playing for the Trailblazers and Magic. By only the age of 33, the once fierce Sean Kemp had played his final game in his NBA career. So now that we've covered most of his career, let's revisit the question of just how good was Sean Kemp really? 
Well, he made six All-Star teams and three All-NBA teams. He's without question one of the greatest dunkers and alley-oop finishers of all time. And he was a decent defensive player, but never won any awards on that end of the court. He was certainly dangerous anywhere around the painted area and in the fast break, but he was never a consistent threat as a shooter for anything beyond mid-range. He didn't have much longevity to his career, but when he was at his best, he was easily one of the most intimidating and explosive big men the game has ever seen. Let me know in the comments section where you rank the Rain Man, Sean Kemp, among the greatest dunkers in NBA history, and how do you think he would do if he played in today's NBA? Thanks for watching as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more basketball content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.